one word about me. I'm working for SourcePol, a company located in Switzerland. We are doing WebJS development, uh, contributing to QJS and other OSGO projects. And I'm talking the first time about Bbox, which is the name of a service, collection of services, which I'm working on since more than two years now. And this is the first time it has been published uh, a week ago. And yeah, here's the link. Uh, you can check the source code. And this talk, again, this talk is, is about what it uh, all um, contains. And it contains uh, different OGC API services. The first one is the classical one, uh, feature service, OG, uh, OGC API features. But it has also OGC API maps. So it's uh, delivering raster maps. It has a tile server, which is partly dependent on, on the map service for raster maps, but also delivers vector tiles. And we have an asset server, which is here for um, delivering um, fonts and sprites and styles, the things you need for a vector tile server. And there is also a processes implementation, uh, which is um, with its own backend, which I will show later. All this together has a common core, which implements the basic OGC API functionality, uh, the endpoints which are required for an OGC API implementation. All these services can be used as, as microservices, but they can also be used um, all together. And that's, it. that's why it is called BBOX, or so the bounding box of all these services is a BBOX server, uh, which is, uh, contains all these parts within a single server. And I call this like a composed microservice architecture, which is also um, made possible by the language which is written in, which is now known. This is Rust. Um, but first, uh, very short about OGC API. Uh, this provides standardized, standardized endpoints like a landing page, with, which is at least in JSON, and contains links to important other pages. It has a conformance endpoint, which is like the capabilities in older standards. It provides a collections endpoints for features and other collections. And in this case, it is a map endpoint, tiles endpoint, processes endpoint, and so on. And all this is usually uh, accessible via an open API interface. Uh, so you have uh, a way to build, even automatically build clients for this API. And now about the language, why would you choose Rust? Many people, not all people know Rust. Uh, it is a, a rather new language. It came out of Mozilla. Uh, it is good for performance. It's a compiled language, but there's also um, good type checking functionality and it has, um, it prevents some classes of errors, which uh, gives you more reliable programs. And it has a very good ecosystem of tools and of libraries. So it gives you great productivity and empowers you to, to write parallel program, programs uh, where you can be sure that you don't do the, the common errors you do when you do that in C or C++. And it keeps also complex projects maintainable. Compiles either to native and or to WebAssembly. That's also made possible that it has the runtime. There is no real runtime. Everything is compiled statically. There is no garbage collection. Um, that makes it far easier for using also uh, in WebAssembly. But now the, all the services which are in this package, the first one is OGC API features. Part one core is implemented, but also the older standards like WFS and WFST are accessible via the QG server backend. It has a JSON API and the HTML viewer. It supports 
API and has also built in UIs, Swagger and Redoc. Um, the data backends are PostJS and GeoPackage for now, and Plant is flat, flat GeoBuff. Um, and Plant is also GDAL, which gives all other formats, but this will be always an optional backend because it's, uh, it's a C++, it's an external library dependency, um, so there will be builds without that, with only the Rust implementations. That's how a, a configuration looks like. You declare a directory where, you, where the PBOX server should uh, look for files, source fi data files, or it's in case of a PostJS source, you have a URL for your connection. The next one is OPBOX map server, which provides the, the not uh, finished OGC, OGC API maps uh, API. And, but also WMS 1.3. And it's not uh, another map rendering engine, but it has two backends, which are, um, have a FCGI interface. So the first one is QG server, and the second one is, is map server. Um, so both can be easily embedded, so you don't need Apache or something else, you'd only need the FCGI binary on your, on, on your machine and then you can put BBOX in front and you have uh, a map, OGC API map service. There are optimized dispatches to the multiple FCGIs in the backend, random round robin, and also optimized for map usage uh, in terms of um, slow requests, for instance, which are a problem when you serve WMS, if you have print requests which uh, take 20 seconds or so, you should limit them to certain processes in the, in the back end that other lightweight requests can still be answered. We also have an embedded map viewer uh, built in uh, the Cookies Web Client 2, which is built in, and we provide instrumentation data for the WMS backend. So this is how the configuration looks like. I go through quickly. You can configure the number of processes. Uh, in case of QJS, you, uh, you configure the base directory where the QJS Q, uh, projects are, and you have two endpoints you declare, one for the QGS, the uncompressed uh, projects, and one for the QG, Q GZ files, the compressed um, projects. And similar for your main map server, there you have the directory where the map files are and the output paths. And there is also a shortcut, so you can directly call uh, a map file. This is a QJS map file. And this starts the map server in the background. Here is QG server. Uh, it's, it provides map service and it opens a map viewer. And the same is also possible with map files. Um, so that's the, the shortcut without any configuration as shown before. You can just view a map file in a viewer. Uh, in the future, we'll also provide other viewers. So this is the uh, QG web client, but we could also have simpler viewers like direct open layers viewer or um, map Libre viewer, which um, we will provide. Next one is a tile server. Uh, the OGC API tiles is um, is final, I think, and we also tested against uh, the test suite. It Bbox provides raster tiles through it this backend I just showed. So it directly um, calls QG server or map server for uh, with a bounding box for a tile. Um, and it passes also WMTS requests through to that backend. So this is still available. Um, as a second way, it has a proxy functionality. The backend can also be a HTTP address, which goes to uh, another WMS server. And the third one is the vector tile server, which 
which goes directly to vector source data. Um, File-based MB tiles is implemented, and PostGIS will follow soon, and GDAL as well, because uh, we want to provide the full functionality of T-Rex, which is another Rust-based uh, tile server, but that's a tile server only, and we want to cover the full functionality of that. Uh, it's not only OGC API, it still provides the, the classical way for uh, tile servers, uh, so it provides also a tile JSON uh, metadata file used by other viewers. It has a seeding component. Um, you can seed your tile cache, uh, which, can, uh, which supports S3 in a uh, parallelized way, which is very performant, or you can seed to local storage. And there is also support for custom tile matrix sets. That's the new standard. Uh, so you don't have only web mercator. You, have on, you can also use uh, other projections. This is how a configuration looks like. You can configure your custom grid. You can configure your caches, either a file cache or a S3 cache or a map proxy backend. And then you can configure your tile sets. Uh, you refer maybe to the backend or you declare the cache. So that's the S3 cache. And here the source are, is an MB tiles. Here the source is a embedded project. In this case, a QG server project um, with parameters and layers or a, a proxy WMS proxy uh, tile set. The next one is the asset server, which is maybe a little bit special. It's not that's not OGC API. That's uh, integrated file server. You need that for um, many other things. You can also provide data downloads uh, with that. Quite simply, you put your data in a directory and serve it through the, the same server. We have also support for templates, which we also have examples for custom viewers with um, templated parameters. And in the future, you could do story maps and other things with that. And we also have a built-in QGIS plugin repository, which is a similar thing. You have uh, plugin files located in a directory, and it is served uh, with this plugin's XML uh, as it is uh, supported by QGIS desktop. I go through that configuration. Yeah, for assets, you for static files, you give a source directory and an output pass. Uh, for templates, the same. And for QGIS plugins, uh, also the pass and uh, the directory and the output pass. The last one is the processes server. Um, which is also OCC API standard, uh, not uh, final yet. It supports synchronous, asynchronous processes. And the first implementation is for Dexter, which is a workflow engine uh, written in Python and supporting um, processing processes coded in Python. It has a lot of functionality, everything you could think of. Um, but we also have another um, backend we want to provide uh, to support, which is Windmill. That's uh, even younger workflow engine, which also supports low code flows, which means you don't have to write code, but you can write code, and you can also uh, you can write code in Python, but also directly call. Uh, shell commands, which is very useful in our GIS environment, so you, so you can call OGR to OGR and things like that. Um, and we provide the OGC API frontend for that. We have built in authentication authorization support, and the goal is that we provide protected services, protected uh, maps, viewers, and, and maps. Uh, what's built in is OAuth2, OpenID Connect, which is 
kind of the new standard way which all major providers support. Um, can be Active Directory, but can be also GitHub or anything. And the easier thing is not implemented yet, which is basic authentication, which will be also supported mainly for WMS, which, uh, this is, uh, which is a common use for that. For further functionality, we integrate with, other, with external identity providers. Um, we are OpenID Connect, uh, like Keycloak, Authentic, which support that. And this provides support multi-factor or LDAP or SAML or whatever. And there you can also have your user database. This, all these identity providers, they support having uh, a user database, groups, and so on. Um, and we integrate with them. What also supported is instrumentation. So we provide Prometheus metrics and traces for Jaeger tracing. And we have a backend which is not uh, fully functional yet, or it's only partially implemented, but it already helps for finding uh, the URLs for capabilities or the viewer URLs, and it shows collections um, for feature, from the feature service, and it goes into the API documentation, but this will be expanded in the future. So this is very modular. You can have all-in-one binary, but you can have different uh, separate binaries. Docker containers are um, already there. Um, you have the file-based configuration, as I showed, they are the same format. You can split them into different services or you have a common file. And everything is also configurable via environment variables, which is important when you use containers. Uh, then you, you don't pref usually don't want a configuration file, but uh, environment variables. Current state, part of it is in production use. The Bbox map server is in use since more than a year, maybe one and a half. Processes server also uh, since more than half a year. For other services, we did conformance testing. Um, and we have also experimental uh, routing server. And we have a, a first alpha release, so for people uh, wanting to play with it. We have many ideas. Uh, we want to provide metadata services. We have uh, assets, so we could also provide a stack, which is an asset catalog, and so on. Full text search engine would be nice. Error support, story maps would be would make sense. Edge services, dashboards, IoT. Many ideas, so the question is, uh, what's next? Uh, I'm doing this talk to, to find people starting to play with it, giving feedback, maybe finding contributors. It's the Rust code is, is readable also for Rust beginners, I think. And if there are contributions, we will move to our GitHub, to a other GitHub organization. We have to write the homepage and documentation. So you can influence the priorities. Uh, what are high performance use cases? Um, yeah, it's up to the users. So that's about it. It's modular. It has enterprise features, but still easy to use. You can use your existing map maps and map services, and yeah, it's open source. Thank you. <laughs>